guys welcome to my channel this is my second vlog and today i'm going to be talking about the lessons that i've learned after being a mom for a year i all know if you've watched my channel before if you're following me on instagram or even if you watched just my first vlog which was the other day my child had just turned a year two weeks ago this has been a crazy bumpy ride it's been a ride full of ups and downs it's been a ride full of adventures and new experiences it's been nothing like i read in the books you know and you know when you before you're a mom you have goals you have dreams you have things that you want for yourself big sometimes big and realistic things like you know traveling the world i wanted to travel to all the countries in the world own a house in monaco private jets and do all this i had big and realistic dreams but then when you have a child everything changes all those dreams you had when you were young of becoming this kind of person out the window now you have a new goal new dreams and you know what that is the most beautiful goal or dream that you've ever had it and it's the most beautiful thing that can happen to any human it's been beautiful and i've learned a lot of things the first thing that i learned about being a mom is the journey doesn't start when you pop out the baby the journey starts when you become pregnant so that's the first step to being a mom people face different challenges some people get it really easily some people aren't even planning to get pregnant they just become pregnant and become moms some people have to go to doctors and do fertility treatments and you know go through so much hardships to become moms some people like my story is i had endometriosis i also had fibroids i don't talk about it much because i, I mean the endometriosis was big bigger for me so i talk about it more but i had fibroids that was removed when i was having my baby anyway story for another day when i least expected it I got the blessing of you know being pregnant and that's when the journey began that's when people start telling you different things people start telling you what you should eat whether you should announce it or not and these are all decisions that moms make it's a very individual decisions whether you want to announce it when the, when you're three months pregnant whether you want to keep it a secret until you have the baby people will give you opinion you read a lot of you know about when is the right time what to wear to hide your pregnancy and do this and do that and eat this and eat that don't eat this never touch this but at the end of the day everybody has different experiences some people have their feet swell, I think it's called edema. Their feet swell, some people don't. Some people have morning sickness and it's crazy bad, some people don't. I remember before I got pregnant, people told me, yo, morning sickness is the worst. You will throw up every day, you'll be sick, you'll never want to wake up. And when I was pregnant, I was my most energetic self. I never got sick, not once. I never threw up, not once. I never felt tired, I think until like, towards the end of my pregnancy when now I was just heavy but that is the first step of motherhood and if you're at this stage take care of yourself listen to what your body is telling you if you you know you want to take walks and if you want to go to the gym do it if your body allows you to if you feel like you're getting too tired or you're getting sick after you know this vigorous exercises then just stop Always remember to consult your doctor whenever you feel anything different or out of place. So when you just feel off, you know, sometimes we just know that something is not right, even if everything seems okay. I remember for me, um, during the beginning of my third trimester, I started to, whenever I walked, I could feel like extreme round ligament pain and sometimes Braxton Hicks. And I talked to my doctor and my doctor told me stop walking and everybody else would be like why would your doctor tell you to stop walking that's the best thing that you know that's what all the other doctors advise for people to walk because it helps you you know when you're pushing but it wasn't working for me it was hurting me it was hurting my body so I just had to stop the second that so the first lesson is you know the journey for be of being a mom starts way before you even pop the baby it starts when you're looking to get pregnant or when you get pregnant you know starts way early when you're even thinking about it um when you get when you have your baby nothing okay 
Boom. Kuja. That's point number one. Nimeongea ni elaborate vizuri, si ndio? Another thing I learned is that being a mom, being pre getting pregnant, you will change. Don't expect to be the same person you were before. Don't even expect to have the same friends you had. Don't expect to even love the same things you did. You will change your body physically, mentally, everything will change. Physically, some people, you know, are lucky and they bounce back. So you really never like get your pre pre baby self back. If you breastfeed, your boobs will sag, your stomach, you might get a bigger stomach, your hips, like your body will change. But your mind especially will also change. The th now you care about someone, there's someone else that you care about so much that like you've never cared for anything, anything in your life. So just expect to change, embrace it, love the changes. Whenever like you feel like, oh my man, now I have this tummy, now I have this body, or now my mind, I can't travel as much. Just remember that change is constant, change is good, and who you've become is better than who you were before. A baby makes us grow, makes us mature, makes us more caring, more empathetic. The thing is like, even for me, sometimes I wouldn't understand what moms are doing. I could see a mom doing a certain thing and I would be judgmental. I wouldn't have that empathy that I have now that I'm a mom towards other struggling women. Even when I see like um, a single woman, a single lady struggling with a baby with no, without help, I have more empathy than I, than I ever had before. Another thing you learn is that, you know what, no matter the amount of books you read, no matter the apps you download, no matter what, you'll never be fully prepared to be a mom. This is something that, what will happen when you, you know, you hold your baby when they come into this world, or even during pregnancy, because you know what, everybody's body is different. Every child is unique. You might read books that will tell you, you know, buy this pram or buy this number of diapers or make sure you have this, make sure you have that. Oh my God, don't forget to get a feeding chair. Do this, do that. Then your baby comes and, your ba and, and, and you find that you don't even want to put the baby in the, in the crib. You want to go sleep. Or your baby comes and your baby is special needs. You didn't prepare for that. No one reads up. You know, you don't, you don't know how your baby is going to turn out. Your baby might come out with colic. No one prepares you for that. And trust me, it's like a challenge. But then there are moments that some little things happen, like you see your baby smiling or, or just looking at the cute little thing that you created and it's so, so beautiful and it's surreal. So no matter how unprepared you are, and no matter how when the baby comes, you'll face a lot of challenges here and there and you'll be like, who am I going to ask? And you, you'll ask this person, but they'll tell you, okay, me, I never experienced that. My child didn't do this. My child didn't do that. You'll realize that the, the joy of being a mom far, far, far outweigh the challenges of being a mom. Another thing I learned, and this I learned, it was a shock to me, is that the connection between a mom and a child is not always instant. Everybody says that when they held the baby, tears were rolling down their eyes and the connection was immediate. They, they could feel the love and everything. But for me, I don't know if it was because I was a CS mom, so I didn't feel the baby coming out, you get? Because I was, I had, um, what is it called, Frankie? CS. Yeah, no, there's the local anesthesia and then there's the other one. Uh, general. That one. I was awake from my chest upwards and then my lower body was... But anyway, you guys will tell me in the comments. But then my lower body was numb. Even though I wasn't feeling any pain, I could feel some sort of movement. But then when I saw him, I was more scared than excited. I saw him and I couldn't, I wouldn't have waited to see him. I had waited for nine months. I was so excited that day, even when I was going to the theater. But then when the baby was brought to me, lying down there with a curtain over my, over my body, and I tried to hold him and I was just scared. I didn't feel that immediate mother to child connection. So if you also, can you guys tell me if you also felt, like if any one of you also felt that or was the connection instant and immediate? Because for me, it wasn't immediate. And even when we went home, 
And then, okay, well, afterwards when I went to the room, I was happy. I cried a little bit, but just a little bit, not like I think mothers cry or how mothers feel. I was more concerned about, oh my God, this is so uncomfortable. And when am I going to go home? And then when I went home, I didn't know, in fact, even in the hospital, I was scared to wash the baby. I was scared to change the diaper. And I, I, it kind of made me feel like, am I not supposed to be, like, am I not made for this? Am I not supposed to be a mom? And then when we went home, I was still, for months, I was just scared. I couldn't sleep. I had, you know, slight depression or blues, as you can call it. The baby had colic, so he could cry and cry and cry and cry. I didn't know any baby songs. I had never kissed a baby in my life. So you would think that because this is your baby, these things would happen naturally and instinctively, but to me, it did not. I remember I couldn't even sing to the baby. And a nanny of mine at the time, and even Frankie would tell me like, you know, talk to the baby, sing to the baby for him to come down. And I could just look at him. And all I could do was just breastfeed. That's all I knew. Get me now. Right now, I sing all those songs. I play, I'm on the floor playing peekaboo. Like, it just came gradually and slowly. But to me, it did not happen instantly. And I've heard or I've talked to other people who also told me that they felt the same. Even though what you hear on social media or like with people is that the connection is always instant, I learned that it's not always instant for everybody. Another thing that I learned, being a mom teaches you how to be present and grateful. The big grand thing that you wanted to, for you to feel that you're good but before you were pregnant like you bought yourself or someone bought you a big huge car they won't matter as much you'll start to see the beauty in little things like your baby clapping like being able to you know provide a roof for your child or being able to give them food little things start to matter more even you start to be like appreciative of people's effort towards you Maybe before people would come to your house and help you cook and you wouldn't even care. But now, if someone comes to your house, brings you a tiny gift for your baby, a shirt, you will really, really be grateful. You wouldn't even look at the Christ tag, you just think, wow, this person loves my child. You'll start to be grateful. If someone comes and cleans your dishes or cooks for you or brings you a bowl of soup when you need it or does your laundry, those things start to matter and you take them more you become more grateful towards little things in your life or little things that people do for you more than you were before it also teaches you how to be present when you have a baby you can't be absent-minded you cannot especially a little thing can happen especially when they start moving you can just look away for a second or be on your phone absent-minded for a minute and the baby is already you know chewing something chewing something they're not supposed to or falling down or rolling on the bed you get so you have to be present for me i'm like those people that were always always i do one thing i cannot multitask when i'm on my phone even if you talk to me forget it i'm not going to hear what you're saying but then being a mom has taught me to be always be aware of my presence where my child is whether they're in the bedroom i have to know what they're doing whether i'm on the phone talking to someone I'm always present and always aware. I cannot just sit down and start being driven. Another thing that I've learned is do not compare yourself with others from getting pregnant. Do not compare how you got pregnant and how someone else got pregnant. From how their life, how their life is, how their, their parenting. Do you do what you feel is right? We are all, we all, we, we know our children more than anyone could ever know. No more than a doctor would, more than you neighbor with eight children knows you know your child better than anyone so do not compare how someone else parents to how you want to parent if you see another person maybe started to feed their baby at three months you don't have to do the same if you feel like your baby is not ready if you feel like if you see like a child walking at 10 10 months and yours hasn't walked do not say do not think you're inadequate children are different and we as mothers are also different so do not compare yourself with anyone else because if you do that you're just going to stress yourself out one thing that you you realize or you learn when you become a mom is style doesn't matter as much as function anymore anything functional is good enough 
forget time you might see like a beautiful expensive crib but you feel like ah it cannot be detached it doesn't have a cassette that doesn't matter you will get the one the simple one the ugly one that works well if you see maybe like anything even for even for me i've always wanted and if you followed me long enough on instagram you know that i've always wanted a jeep i'm in a position now where i could get the jeep but i'm just thinking and i always wanted a convertible jeep but now i'm thinking if i get this convertible jeep do i have to buy another car to be carrying the baby because i can't put the baby in a you know a topless car I'm, I'm more inclined towards buying a Noah. I don't know. I mean, even if I, if I have more kids, a Noah can hold more children. And if we're going on a play date with other kids, it can hold more children. So basically, style becomes, uh, function becomes more important than style. Even, even with what you wear, you might find that you ditch all your stylish, beautiful clothes for a zipped dera. I guess style comes later when the children are a bit older. Only two points left. There are two more things I want to talk about. When you have a baby, your baby daddy or husband or boyfriend might not be the same person they were before pregnancy. The same way you change, the same way they might change. They might change for the better or they might change for the worst. This is something you have to expect when you're getting pregnant. We love these men. We love them as boyfriends. We love them when we're going out and having fun and clubbing and everything. But when the baby comes, things might be different. For me, luckily, I got someone that helped me, someone that taught me a lot of things because he was already experienced, more, more experienced than I was. He stepped up as a dad because it's something that he already, it wasn't a first, it wasn't something unexpected to him, he, he was already a father before. But you might get someone that has never been a father or never had their father around and when the baby comes they realize, oh wow, this is actually not what I expected. This is a lot of work. Oh, you've changed. Oh, you've become this kind of person. I liked you when you were clubbing and, 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 and get up whenever. Or, oh, you used to dress in a certain way and now you don't dress that way anymore because function of a style, guys. If that happens, just know that you are a woman and we were meant to be, we are strong, you're beautiful and whether like someone decides to stay and learn because someone can be bad at being a father but then they'll be willing to learn how to be a father. Maybe they've never been dads but some of them might just get scared and just run away and disappear. If that happens, girl, you've got this, you can do it. The last, another point that I would like to talk about is your relationship will change. Your relationship will change. You won't be able to, you know, wake up at midnight to have some jiggy jiggy. You won't be able to go to the club and party. You won't be able to go to all the lunches in the world. Your money will be tied somewhere. Your time will be tied somewhere. Your attention will be divided between, in fact, most of it goes to the baby, but so it will be divided between the, the partner and your baby. You have to work on your relationship. If you have to like create time and say just every week, we have to do something, just the two of us, no baby involved, the baby remains with the nanny. But you'll have to put more effort in your relationship, more than you ever did before you were pregnant. So this is something that you have to know that it won't be easy, things will change. But don't just give up or don't just say, ah, Ah, oh, things have changed, the guy has changed, I've changed, this is not working, bye. No, you have to put in effort, even uh, when it comes to intimacy, you have to talk. You have to create time for your partner and, you know, sometimes also remember to give him or her some attention. To sum up, this is the most beautiful title a person can bear. Being a mom is a blessing. It's challenging, but the joy of being a mom outweighs any challenge that comes with it. And I wish you all the best. You're strong, you're beautiful, and you can. Bye.